Yeah. Welcome in, Viking fans, vikenation.org. It's the AD Podcast for the fall season 2023. We're here with AD Joe Roberts. Joe, how are we doing? Rob, it is so great to see you. It's great to be back. Uh, it's been a great summer, but here we go. It's time. It's uh, We're so excited to be partnered uh, with the Princeton Vikings again this season. And uh, boy, can you believe it? Fall season's already underway. I can't believe it. It's it's uh, been one of the fastest summers that I think I can remember, and uh, but it's also extremely exciting to kick everything off, and and uh, you know with boys and girls soccer on Friday night, and then uh, obviously as we move right on into the season. But golf and tennis have been full go. It seems like almost two weeks now. You know, it's just going so fast, but it's an exciting time of the year as we get every, all of our students and our staff back to the schools. Speaking of staff, that's a great segue, uh, Joe. Uh, you have a new member on your staff running athletics yeah. for Princeton High School. Uh, why don't you introduce to the fans uh, who uh, took Mac Weber's place, who was there for, gosh, 13, 14 years. And, he was a lifer. Uh, yep, yeah, did a great job. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Matt uh, took, a, took a leadership role and is now running Wyoming's athletic department, and we're super excited about that. Uh, expanding that tree and getting him out on his own. And we brought uh, Chris Cunningham in from Murray State University. He was a football coach, but he he joined us this summer, and we're extremely excited about uh, what he's been doing for us And in terms of just uh, not necessarily just on the leadership side, but organizationally and thoughts and ideas and just brought a little bit different voice than uh, what we're what we've seen in the past. And so we're really excited about getting him in here and opportunity to be with our student athletes and our coaches and, and us on a daily basis. So that's great. So when you see uh, Chris heading to the press box or standing on the sidelines, uh, say hello. He's a great new addition to the Viking team. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and we're looking forward to that. For the fans, um, the AD podcast is back. We're going to do eight shows this fall. Uh, we're going to record them on Mondays. Uh, they will be out uh, on vikenation.org uh, Monday afternoons, and we're going to try to cover everything, uh, uh, try to cover every sport each week and just kind of give an overview. Joe, why is it, I've always wondered this question, why does tennis and golf in the fall start so early? Is it because they need to squeeze in those matches uh, and, and just get course time? Yeah, I, you know, and that's what it is, Rob, at the end of the day, you know, tennis and golf have that unique ability that they can try to, to capture as much as they can. Golf, golf is a unique, it's not played on a campus. Sometimes tennis isn't played on a school's campus, they're in a park or at, a, at another site. And so when our golf coaches and we go out and we start scheduling matches, obviously golf courses operate on evening leagues with adults. And so trying to find course time, it's like, well, they come on in at nine o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning. So uh, a lot of us try to get as many matches as we can because we can take advantage of those early tee times for those student athletes. And then once the school year hits, they're able to slow some of those 18 hole events down. And tennis is the same way. I think our tennis coaches uh, just have a mentality. If they can jump a whole bunch of matches in early, when it's a little cooler in the day, because August is just a, it's a hot time of year or a humid sure. time of year. So if they can get some early morning matches in and not have to worry about the effects of school, plus our student athletes may have jobs in the afternoon or jobs in the evening before school starts because they're lifeguarding or what have you, um, then they have a chance to get those matches in and be done. And then they set themselves up for a little bit more preparation as with the school year starts. That sounds great. Great answer on that. I've always wondered and uh, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I want to touch base on a sport that doesn't get a lot of publicity, but I know it's very successful at Princeton High School because uh, I've broadcast several of their water polo matches last year. And uh, it, it is a great sport. It's exciting. And the Viking boys and girls water polo teams are outstanding. They are, uh, Rob, and we are extremely surprised. Uh, supportive or proud of, of Viking WOPO. That's yep. the terminology. I use WOPO. I've learned a lot of different sport lingo uh, over the summer from some of our newer coaches, but we have a, a whole new staff back with our water polo team to lead our Aqua Vikes. And um, they're all Princeton alums. That's they're outstanding. All, they're all Princeton water polo players. And so uh, Nick Walls and Sean Fedick 
uh, are handling the boys and the girls teams respectfully. And then we uh, have Rachel and Danny Rust as our assistants. And they uh, they count Rachel especially. She was a coach at Sycamore before we were able to bring her home. Okay. And they come just bringing a wealth of knowledge back to us. And, and we're just really excited. And we're looking forward to Tuesday night as we kick off with Sycamore. Very nice. And I know uh, early in August, uh, we're uh, St. Xavier Bombers are coming over for a water polo match that I think we're broadcasting. So we'll, we'll make sure we link that uh, on vikenation.org as well um, and just push that out both ways. And it's, it's just uh, last year was my first year to be involved with water polo. And boy, is it exciting. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah, the Bombers, they told us that ESP is going to uh, broadcast the match on Tuesday so or Wednesday. And uh, we're just we're excited about uh, getting back in the water and and we're excited just about getting things going here because yeah. it's here. Yeah, it sure is. Let's go uh, girls volleyball. Um, you know, one of the God, probably the biggest sports in the country is girls volleyball with uh, USA volleyball and AAU and everything. It's uh, what a sport. Yeah, you know, and and Coach Weller and her staff, she's uh, had some new additions on this in the assistant side, but Coach Weller and her staff have done a really good job this summer getting our girls ready. Um, our team is young, but our team is aggressive, and so they've been playing a lot of volleyball in the off season and getting themselves prepared. And you're going to see a little bit different from a strategy standpoint, I think, of our volley bikes uh, than we have before. I think they've mixed some things up in terms of rotations. And I think we're we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit of formidable force and draw some attention to some people as we move into. And people can say what they want. I think the GMC is the most competitive conference in the state of Ohio, um, top to bottom in every sport. And so when you go in night in night out against uh, our league and you're facing the Masons and the Lakotas and the Sycamores of the world, uh, on top of Oak Hills and Fairfield, I think you're going to see just high quality, high level volleyball through and through. And. Oh, by the way, I think the best volleyball gym in Cincinnati is the Princeton Viking gym. It's just a great yeah. place to watch. It, there, there's no uh, obstructions up in the ceiling. It's just a, it's just a great gym to watch uh, volleyball. It is. It's a perfect venue. We love hosting tournaments there. We love uh, just bringing people into our campus and, and coming into Viking Arena. It's just a great place. Come catch it this year. Let's talk soccer. Overall, since FC Cincinnati has uh, taken the city by storm. I don't know. I guess they're close to a decade in. It sure seems like boys and girls soccer at the high school level, the the quality and the athletes that are playing the sport has increased. And I just wonder if it has anything to do that we have a pro team in town. I, I believe there's probably some correlation to that, Rob. Um, just the, the fact of the matter is, is that you introduce soccer to kids at, you know, what, four years old? Sure. Or, or maybe even younger, as soon as they can walk, they're kicking a ball. So I think we've become a generation where we're starting to see uh, kids that have done it since they were really young. And it's just been part of their DNA. And we we certainly Cincinnati has just a tremendous ground across the board for youth soccer and club soccer. And then obviously with FC here. And I had a chance to go to an FC match for my first time this summer. And what an unbelievable First class uh, stadium, right? Oh, it's first class facility. It's an unbelievable environment. Um, and the fans there, you, you passionate. Know, I, they're passionate. It re kind of reminded me as an old Cleveland Browns fan, my first time ever going to the dog pound. Really? That's what it reminded me. The Bailey is like going to the dog pound. And that's, that's, uh, then for those of us in the Bengal world, when, you know, it's the second jungle, you know, yes. welcome to the, and it is. And so um, we're really excited about, uh, Viking soccer this year. And like I said, we're going to open up with Turpin on Friday night, August the 11th uh, here at Princeton uh, girls and boys varsity matches. The boys will play at five 15 and the girls at approximately seven 30, but we have a new boys coach uh, leading our, our Viking right. soccer team, John Hyatt. And I was referring to earlier. He, uh, when he first came in, he said, Hey, we've got a couple friendlies set up. And I said, what? I, I don't know what that meant. And it, those are scrimmages. And I said, so now I'm, I use this where we got friendlies that are coming. So our friendlies are over and now we're into the regular season. And then Aaron Bannister, our girls coach is in his second year and uh, really looking forward to seeing what the, uh, what the girls are going to do uh, and the boys. There's a lot of momentum. Uh, I've seen the boys a couple of times practicing and a couple of our boys are also kicking 
on the football team and they just have a lot of energy and excitement and enthusiasm with what's to come and our girls program as well it's going to it's got a lot of veterans coming back and a lot of girls that have been playing soccer for a long time and and uh, so we just need to keep that aggressive uh, attack system if you will going so we're looking forward to it that's exciting you know one of the sports that's in with most schools that's probably the second largest in student body that that participates besides football is cross country and i never realized that um that cross country teams are huge that there's a, a large amount of people that uh, participate in cross country and uh, it's it's pretty exciting that kids get involved get to enjoy the the team camaraderie and um you know get in shape and 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 run 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 turn run, run. Turn left run 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 is the absolute statement rob i uh, if you ever are in glendale in the summertime you'll see the viking runners uh, running all through there and, and coach cobb and coach campbell have done an amazing job of training our varsity athletes um, this year and getting them ready and, and prepared and our middle school program is just as strong in terms of numbers but also in terms of of that commitment and to what they're doing and you know, we've talked about this before on the podcast about cult sports, if you will. Yes. You know, you've got to be bought in to be a cross country runner because you're not just going to wake up and say, I'm going to go run 18 miles today just because yes. you want to run 18 miles. You've got yes. to want to do that. And and our, our runners are amazing and we're excited about the season. We'll start from the varsity level with the OHSA preseason meet. We'll have a chance to head up to Fortress Obets Park and get on that course and see what that's like and let our runners get that feel of what it'll be like there at the end and give them some drive. And of course, uh, toward the end of September, we'll have our invite sure. and uh, out at Landmark Christian Church. And it's just a great, great event uh, for, for running uh, cross country. It's a great facility. It's a great uh, course. Very exciting stuff, Joe. Let's wrap with uh, something that's extremely exciting is Viking football. Um, Great things are happening on the gridiron for the Vikings. It's exciting to see. Um, let's talk about uh, the football program. Well, I mean, uh, I, where where do you want to begin? Like he, Coach Parker has done just an unbelievable job of setting the tone in the off season for our football team. And there is a high amount of energy that is stemming through there. But but not only that, there's a high amount of maturity that I've I've seen in our younger kids, mm -hmm. our younger football players. They they act as if they're old veterans. And that is just great to see. We've got a battle at the quarterback position. And I know Coach Parker uh, is seeing that each and every day and evaluating it. Uh, in our first scrimmage with Troy, uh, defensively, we look really, really good. We got to button some things up there. I think I, you know, obviously a key for special teams. Um, but he he's got an unbelievable game plan. He's got a great staff this year uh, that's helping him along the way. He's brought some old veteran coaches in that uh, that have really helped uh, bring just a different perspective. Coach Parker is one of those uh, coaches that just wants to hear different ideas and and share opinions and figure out ways to grow and. You know, I saw some preseason ranking. Of course, you can throw those out the window that we're sure. six right now. Um, but that's that's good for the Vikings. That's good where Princeton needs to be. We've got an unbelievable daunting schedule right off the bat mm -hmm. where we'll travel to Elyria uh, on the 18th or 16th, I mean, 18th, on 18th. the 18th of August. And then we'll come back and we'll head up to that school just north of us, Lakota West, for week two. And uh, we'll try to set the tone off early and, and get this league season going and, and be ready to go. But the kids are healthy. They're, they're excited. They're excited to get back to school and get back to that routine. But coach has done an amazing job of keeping that consistency for us all year long. Joe, when, when you have a varsity football program that, that is successful, has a leader like coach Parker, do you see the lower level numbers uh, increase um, oh, that yeah, they, that they want yeah. to be a part of the program. Yeah, Rob, seventh and eighth grade. I and I probably am inflating it, but the last I heard, we were right around 90. Oh, it's outstanding. Uh, seventh and eighth graders, which that's an unbelievable opportunity for those kids. But then it's also a really tough problem because 90, you got to try to make sure you give those kids opportunities to be on that field. Yes. They've got to see the field in order to stay with that engagement. And then the Little Vike program as well has been. Uh, just continues to grow 
uh, with uh, Donnie and David White and what they're doing with those uh, students at the sixth grade and below. Uh, you can come up here almost any night of the week and you can see little Pee Wee football and over here on these grass fields just getting after it. And so, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for for Viking football to watch across the board. And they're, they're gravitating to Coach Parker. That has to, as the leader of the athletic department, that has to be very gratifying to you because that's not the the norm in the nation right now. Uh, lower level football numbers are down. Unfortunately, it's yeah. it's it's the best sport out there. So it's so nice to hear that your numbers are up, and it just it just shows you when you got the right leader, um, people want to follow and be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know it, it is. Um, it is something that we we uh, we celebrate that success, and then we also want to make sure that the students have opportunities to participate. We had our opening day convocation this morning, and and our new superintendent, Mr. Card, had some students up on the stage, and they all went down down the line talking about what they enjoy about being a Princeton Viking. And when you heard a couple of our students who are below high school level say they appreciate and value all the different activities that they can participate in and be a part of. It just sends a great message about what we're doing here at Princeton to make sure our students are prepared for life after this school and um, just giving them opportunities to do things. And it's just great to see. That's just awesome. Well, Joe, uh, our first uh, AD podcast of the season is, is completed. I appreciate your time today. Uh, great things. Uh, things are moving fast for all of us right now, and uh, we'll touch base next Monday. And uh, best of luck to all the Viking uh, athletic teams uh, as they kick off their seasons. Absolutely, Rob. Thank you for everything. And, and as always, go Vikes. Thank you, sir.